Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, Bank of Ghana rejects allegations of contract over bloating, procurement breaches, and the use of an unregistered company to build the 250 million uh, city new headquarters. We've got details coming up. Also coming up, Economist Intelligence Unit predicts that Ghana will reach an agreement with its external creditors in the coming weeks to pave way for restructuring of foreign loans. Meanwhile, government likely to extend the second round of domestic debt exchange program for about a week despite receiving 90% participation in the domestic dollar bonds and cocoa bills. My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. The Bank of Ghana has rejected allegations of contract over bloating, procurement breaches, and the use of an unregistered company to build a 250 million uh, city new headquarters. The bank has been engaging the media on recent developments about its headquarters and the 61 billion city loss amidst pressure from the minority in parliament and the NDC for the governor and his deputies to resign. The Bank of Ghana governor, Dr. Ennis Addison, who addressed the press conference, said, the central bank's current financial position will not be negatively impacted by the losses. Right, we'll bring you that um, as soon as we have it. But I want to link up with uh, George Jeffrey, who covered the press conference for us. Uh, George, uh, first off, uh, what has the governor been saying about the losses incurred uh, in the previous year? So basically the governor insisted that this was as a result of participating in the debt exchange program or more of like bonds and government papers that were issued over the year. And, and Darrell, the, the governor went back to explained that these are papers that have been issued as far back as 2000 or maybe 1992 rather covering several uh, financing options that the bank of ghana had participated in terms of government bonds so this loss that was posted in 2022 was not exclusively as a result of financing issued to support government in the era of the pandemic and this were running from 1992 1993 1994 and even in 2000 as well. So the argument is that this was not just support that the bank has advanced the government in 2022. And Dara, this financing has to do with bonds that the government of Ghana owes the Bank of Ghana because they had bought them. And due to the debt exchange program, government decided to more of pass on a serious haircut to the central bank. And that is why you saw that loss of the 61 uh, billion Ghana cities in 2022, Darrell. And uh, the central bank has also faced crit criticism over the construction of a new head office for it. What justification did the governor have for that as well? Well, Darrell, earlier on you heard the Bank of Ghana explain about the, the fact that this building that we are in uh, wasn't fit for purpose and therefore, one of that is a major reason why they decided. And that the decision to even construct this headquarters has, over the years, uh, that decision has been taken by the board and the Bank of Ghana to go ahead with this. He further explained that the decision to go ahead to construct this new headquarters was taken or kickstart in 2019. And that they are drawing funding or they drew funding, Darrow, uh, from the profits made in previous years. So it wasn't that the decision was taken to go ahead even in late 2021 or 22, and that in the time when they were making losses, they are going ahead with this project. The profits or the funding was actually gotten from previous years where they had made profits. And that is why they had made this commitment to this building to be constructed there. 
And a final one, uh, George, uh, the central bank also mentioning that it is going ahead with the zero financing of government's budget. What more do the central bank governor have to say about that? So there, there have been concerns or argument that the Bank of Ghana has been in the practice of that they've always been financing government. The governor explained that over the years, actually, there have been strict uh, zero financing of government operations. The only time that this didn't happen was in 2022 because of the pandemic. And that is why they had to bend back the rules and advance support to government because of the crisis that we're in. Dara, a question also came up about getting further clarity about whether the governor of the Bank of Ghana, or even Bank of Ghana, physically printed money to finance government operations in 2022. Well, the governor explained that the bank has a lot of resources. And in terms of this overdraft, they fell on these resources to finance government operation. They didn't go out there to print uh, French currency notes to support government operations. And that is what the governor uh, said in trying to clarify how the financing was done for government in last year during this press conference, Dara. Uh, quick one, George. Was he asked if he intends to resign? No, he, w he wasn't asked. And uh, we are yet to get clarity on that one, Dara, whether he right. will take that action or not. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, George. I feel with that update from the head office of the Bank of Ghana. The Economist Intelligence Unit is predicting that Ghana will reach an agreement with its external creditors in the coming weeks to pave way for the restructuring of foreign loans. This is disclosure from its newest document titled Outlook for Global Sovereign Credit. There's more in this report. This will come as a piece of good news for the country as it will be on schedule to begin its external debt restructuring. According to the UK-based firm, Ghana has advanced with its negotiation for external debt restructuring. The country, in December 2022, requested a bilateral debt restructuring under the Common Framework for Debt Treatments supported by the G20. In June this year, the government sent a non-binding working debt restructuring proposal to official bilateral creditors, signifying the beginning of a negotiation process that the EIU said it expects to conclude in the coming weeks. Ghana and five other countries defaulted on their loans in 2022 as public finances became strained whilst interest rates surged. The UK-based firm added that many more countries are expected to record debt default this year. And most of these countries at the highest risk of debt default are in Africa. Meanwhile, the government is likely to extend the second round of the domestic debt exchange program for about a week. This is despite receiving about 90% participation in the domestic dollar bonds and cocoa bales. Here's more. Based on the engagement with persons with knowledge of the offer results, they say the extension should be described as an administrative one and not because the offer wasn't successful. This because the domestic dollar bond and the cocoa bills had about 90% participation. However, when it comes to the pension funds, most of the fund managers wanted some extra time to properly collate the offers that have come in, hence the need for this administrative extension. The offer, which began on July 14, has already been extended by once already. Government is hoping to restructure 60 billion Ghana cities worth of bonds in this last round of domestic debt exchange program. That is, the domestic dollar bonds, the cocoa bills and the pension funds. The holders of these funds are expected to exchange their papers for new bonds. Sources say based on this result, Government can see that it has technically concluded the domestic debt exchange program. This should help the country in securing the second round of IMF cash by the end of this year. Now, interest rates surged on the money market to 31.08% as the government's borrowing spree on the domestic market continued. According to results of Treasury bills auctioned by the Bank of Ghana, 
uh, the government got 3.45 billion cities. That's 12.91% uh, lower than the ambitious targeted amount of 3.96 billion cities. On Zoom with us is Patrick Edemagama, who is head of trading at Republic Securities, back from his leave with some analysis. Uh, good afternoon to you, uh, Patrick. Welcome back. So interest rates keep surging on the money market. What's keeping the rates up? Good afternoon, Daryl. Um, what we are seeing is that um, uh, as the, the time for the DDP uh, coupon payments uh, is, is coming uh, near, the target for government also rises in the market. Um, and we are seeing interest rates going up because investors are equally uh, bidding higher than we see in the previous weeks. Also, inflation could also be a reason because we've seen inflation inching up uh, by some basis points in the past week. So we expect that trend to continue for some time. Well, so government got 12.91% lower than its target for the past week um, uh, during the T-bills auction. Give us a rundown from um, last week's auction. Well, okay, so uh, we, we've seen that um, the 182 day uh, was the most desired for last week. It took about 49% of the total bids accepted against uh, 91 day inching up to 47 percent of the total bids are, uh, accepted and then 364 day uh, taking four percent of the total bids accepted then 91 day closed at 26.71 percent uh, inching up by 61.55 basis point the 182 day cleared at 27.88 percent uh, increasing by 28. 33 basis point and then the 364 day close at 31.08 percent and so uh we expect mixed performance on the stock market this week tell us how trading went last week and what to expect this week as well well for last week we saw gcb dominating both trade volumes and values um, we expect more interest in the stock this week as well we saw stocks like total societe bob and gcb increasing in some persuades. Uh, we saw losers like GGBL and uh, Ecobank Ghana dropping some persuades to close at 2.5 um, to and 4.32 respectively. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick Kagama, Head of Trading at Republic Secu uh, Securities. I appreciate your time with us. You're watching the marketplace. We want to cross over now to a press conference. Uh, by political parties in response to the limited voters registration exercise taking place right now. These guidelines outline procedural rules regul and regulations for the special electoral college, which is to elect five presidential aspirants for the National Congress in November. The updated operational guidelines have been shared among all aspirants and relevant key stakeholders. Successful balloting casting on Wednesday, 26 July 2023. The Elections Committee, in collaboration with officials from the Electoral Commission of Ghana, successfully conducted a balloting exercise for the candidates for the election. Below is the order in which the candidates would appear on the ballot paper. Position 1, Honorable Kennedy Ahinek Ajepon. Position 2, Honorable Alan Kojo Tremartin. Position 3, Honorable Joe Gatti. Position 4, Honorable Kojo Poku. Position 5, Dr. Uusu Efriya Koto. Position 6, Engineer Kwabna Ajepon. AJ Ajepon. Position 7, Engineer Francis Adainimo, position eight, Dr. Kofi Knedu Apreku, position nine, Honorable Bache Ajaku, position ten, His Excellency Alaji, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. All right, you rather watched uh, an MPP press conference on uh, the party's upcoming uh, delegates conference or Congress supposed to take place this weekend. Uh, we will go back to the political party's press conference on the limited voters registration exercise 
when we have that feed. But I want to take you now to South Africa, where uh, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa is alarmed that recent incidents of coup d'etats across the continent could undermine the African continental free trade area. Ghana, which is hosting the framework seeking to promote free trade and mutual growth, is facing serious threats of instability given the rise in military takeovers and violent extremism in the West African sub-region. Speaking in a televised address as the BRICS summit takes off uh, in South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa indicated that for Africa to thrive, the guns must be silenced. We are working towards the full implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, which is set to eliminate trade barriers, boost intra-African trade, and achieve prosperity for all of Africa. It will also accelerate manufacturing and industrial capacity on our continent. The vibrant trading Africa we seek to build depends on Africa being stable and peaceful. For our continent Africa to thrive, we must silence the guns. We continue to work within the African Union to end several ongoing conflicts on the continent and restore constitutional and democratic government to countries that have recently experienced coups. South Africa is directly involved in a number of efforts to bring peace to Africa. We are currently involved in supporting the people of Mozambique and the Democratic Republic of Congo to ensure that there is peace and stability in their countries. Well, Executive Director of the Policy Initiative for Economic Development, uh, Dr. Daniel Mate and him joins us on Zoom uh, to discuss the BRICS Summit. As you know, uh, these countries uh, are forging an agenda to uh, sort of break away from U.S. influence. And so de-dollarization is going to be an important agenda. They've also been discussing a common currency. But question, uh, Dr. Martin Nim, is can BRICS shake off the dominance, dominance of the U.S. and is it feasible, a feasible idea in the first place, you think? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, there has been the agenda of BRICS over the period. And uh, the idea is to break away from the use of the dollar have their own currency. And as it stands within the geopolitics, as well as the global economics, uh, the United States of America are very mindful about the dollar. And anything that will undermine the use of the dollar, they will definitely come after you. And that, that, that has been their position. But interestingly, looking at the BRICS, the likes of Russia, the likes of China, and emerging economies like Brazil, it is a, they are economies that they are very, very emerging strongly, very dominant, especially China. Uh, so that will make it very difficult for the United States even to undermine these economies by whatever tactics. So to me, I think it is a step in the right direction. Uh, if they are able to achieve that, what it means is that they will be able to quickly begin to warm up all the economies into that block and if that is extended further, that could, within the medium to long term perspective, uh, undermine or minimize the use of the dollar. And what it means is that the power, uh, maybe the financial power that the United States controls, even in terms of trade, could be undermined going forward. So to me, I think it's a, it's a step in the right direction. So far as these economies are concerned, it will minimize our reliance on the dollar and it will help them better to focus on their economies and grow their economies better and also help them to kind of have a certain degree of influence within the global economic geopolitics. How, how much of our dependence on the U.S. foreign currency, how much of that has uh, got to be blamed for the current economic crisis that developing countries like Ghana are facing? Yes, uh, because, you know, predominantly we price almost everything in the U.S. dollar uh, in terms of importation, whatever we do. And because we do not, uh, so to speak, print the U.S. dollar domestically, so we need to attract inflows to be able to have it. So anytime our reserves drops, then we are in difficulty, then that affects the performance of the city. Mm. But unfortunately, economies like Ghana, it will be very difficult for us to stand now 
to kind of shift away from the use of the dollar because we are too insignificant that if the United States should cough, we could, our economy could significantly be undermined. And that's the reason which uh, AU uh, ought to be very vibrant so that we, we will have our own currency as a continental bloc and that will make us very resilient against any other uh, forces like the United States that may try to undermine that particular process. And, uh, and I believe strongly the reason which up to now we couldn't have a common currency is because of this invisible hands, uh, you know, from the states and other Western blocs that know very well that if we should have our own currency working very well, uh, the, 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 the economic mind of the United States and other Western blocs could be undermined. So uh, it, it has, the, the use of the dollar, as we all know, significantly dictating the pace of our economy, the direction of the economy, and even the performance of our local currency. How would this agenda work to the benefit of our economy? And what are the potential challenges of a common currency um, at the BRICS level going forward, do you think? Yes, to me, let me start with a positive. Uh, what it means is that the countries within the BRICS will be able to trade among themselves uh, with that particular currency. So what it means is that their local currency could be, uh, could have a very significant value because they will not be depending on the United States. Okay, that is the first thing. Secondly, uh, countries that are aligned to, let's say, China, Russia, and the rest could gradually begin to align and then that will make them have a certain dominance in terms of the global dominance. So these are the positives. Now, in terms of the negatives, is that they should be able to have a master plan in place to be able to mitigate any uh, kind of reaction from the United States. Uh, that one, uh, I can assure you that by now the United States is definitely planning uh, attacking mechanisms by way to frustrate the efficient use of whatever currency that they may come out with. So they need to put in any mechanism to be able to. And other thing is that any other country, like smaller countries like Ghana, which may skew towards the BRICS, uh, we, we are likely to be <laughs> to, to be in court, to be mm. sanctions or Yes, so certain strings may be pulled that may affect, you know, uh, our relationship with the nest. So, so to me, these are some of the challenges that they, they need to work towards. I'm very, I'm very mindful that with China, with its economic mind, emerging economies like India and then Brazil, as well like the uh, military might of Russia, they should be able to come up with something that should work for them. All right, uh, before you go, Quick thoughts on um, this story of following for you. The governor of the central bank um, addressed the press today, of course, on issues concerning the central bank's losses. It has been justifying its spending, the construction of a new um, head office, also its financing for government's budget. Uh, mind you, it says that going forward, there'll be zero financing for government's uh, uh, budget. Uh, your thoughts on how the central bank has handled the matter so far and if you support calls for the central bank governor to resign? The call for him to resign is a very difficult one. Uh, there are laws, there should be a justification in the sense that he has maybe willfully uh, undermined uh, systems put in place at the Bank of Ghana, uh, deliberately facilitated the kind of losses that we have uh, we have witnessed from the BOG uh, the kind of policy that they were pursuing. It is, it is politically motivated. It's not from professional perspective. And of course, the, the call for him to resign may be appropriate. I think we've not got into that stage yet. I must admit uh, that looking at the report that came, uh, I'm not so much in tune with some of the uh, happenings, uh, of course, in terms of administrative expenses and then the like. But as we all know, some of these expenditures were as a result of the debt estate program, which uh, probably uh, may fall to some studies extend out of their scope. Now, we, in respect of the new edifice, my point is that uh, the, the current edifice was constructed somewhere in 1957 or so, when the Bank of Ghana was established. Uh, we've got it to a state that they having a new edifice shouldn't be a major issue. To me, it is an issue because of the current dynamics within the, uh, the economy and the amount involved. Uh, so BOG explanation that it is not just a one-shop something, but uh, it's, they have made certain investment over the period, and as a result of that, they have what it takes to be able to put out that edifice. Uh, if that is, that is factual, then uh, to my mind, I don't think there's anything, uh, because it's an edifice that mm. becomes a state property. Okay. So in that sense, 
No, just conclude on your, st your sentence. Right. So all that I'm trying to say is that uh, I wasn't so much enthused in terms of how issues were handled recently by the Bank of Ghana, but in terms of the edifice, uh, I think if it, it will not undermine our current economic position, uh, then there's nothing wrong with it. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Daniel Amate, NIM Executive Director, Policy Initiative for Economic Development. Up next, Money Lab. Hello and welcome to Money Lab. My name is Kofi Poli, Chief Operations Officer of People's Pension Trust. We are continuing our pension tidbits on Money Lab. In our last episode, we looked at how two types of pensions. Today, we are going to look at reasons for having a pension plan. In fact, we are being told that by 2050, one in every five persons will be 60 years and above in developing countries. It is also a known fact that life expectancy is going up and therefore there is a need for us to plan our life beyond our working life and this is why we need to look at income security in our old age and that's how camp pension fits in. We will continue with our reasons in our next episode. Thank you for being with us. All right, and that's our program this afternoon. Thanks for watching everyone. More news on our website, myjoeonline.com forward slash business. Uh, we have more on the Bank of Ghana's uh, press conference today. Uh, the governor, Bank of Ghana governor, special press conference on the 2022 laws in the new head office. As you'd hear, he says that it is not an ordinary building. Myjoeonline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching. We are back same time tomorrow.